All right, guys, uh, we have got one, two, three chapters, sub chapters to go. Uh, the extension question, what's the benefit of having a telescope in space? I think we've probably talked about that, but just have a think about it as we move through uh, the PowerPoint. What we're doing with this um, sub chapter and with Hubble's laws, we're tying together some of the other learnings we've had. So the idea of redshift and spectra and um, the idea of the Doppler effect and uh, we're bringing those things together then to uh, I suppose provide the foundation for Hubble's law and um, you'll also notice there uh, with the third learning question the number of different or the fact you've got two different um, uh, units for Hubble's constant commonly asked question by OCR is to convert from one to the other and we'll get a chance to have a look at that and then we've talked about the cosmology principle, um, which we'll revisit now because it's an important part of this. Uh, so we've got six keywords. Um, you should pause the video and uh, get them down into your spec notes. Uh, the first one is this idea that the universe started from a singularity, which was a really hot, dense place. Um, and then it exploded and expanded rapidly outwards. And we'll cover that in the next couple of sub chapters uh, the Hubble constant which is just a gradient it's a gradient uh, of the graph plot in recessional speed which is the speed something's moving away from you and um, against the distance from the earth of that object uh, this uh, the object in this case being galaxies not stars or planets whole galaxies and then you've got Hubble's law which is that when you plot this ga um, graph of recessional speed against distance from the earth you end up uh, showing direct proportionality. Cosmology principle, really important, uh, highlighted in red. And it's this idea that if you take a step far enough away from the universe and view it in a big enough scale, that actually it's homogeneous and isotropic. So when we're talking about homogeneous, it means that there's an even distribution of matter. Right? And then isotropic is me just means it's the same in all directions. So no matter what position you are in, in the universe, it appears the same, which is, it's a crazy, it's a crazy principle, but it allows us to apply the laws of physics um, across the universe. So Edwin Powell, um, hilariously smoking a pipe there, uh, was one of the greatest cosmologists of the 20th century. And, and what he um, started to show was that distant galaxies were moving away from us and the further they were the faster they were moving and you know he, he made um, some observations initially and and then he started to use spectra and then he realized that um, the galaxies the light from those galaxies um, or the electromagnetic waves from those galaxies was redshifted which we covered in the Doppler effect and that meant they had a relative velocity away from us on Earth. Um, he also found, generally found, that the further the galaxy was away from us, the more redshift there were, i.e. the faster the recessional speed was. Um, and you can see here one of his early um, plots, you know, and there's maybe about, I don't know, there's about 30 data points there. And you can get a line of best fit through it. It doesn't quite look like it's going through the origin. And it's got a massive uncertainty. But even at this stage, you know, he um, he proposed that as we collected more data, that this uh, direct proportionality would become more evident. And that was the case. Uh, this is the data back in 2013. And, um, y you know, it's that line of best fits generated by computer, equal number of data points on either side, straight line, through the origins, all the things that we should be aware of constitute drawing or defining a line of best fit. And uh, what he was then able to do was find the gradient of that line, which he then called the Hubble's constant. And um, that gradient showed or, or allowed us to say that the recessional speed um, was directly proportional to the distance from the Earth. Now, the SN uh, the SI units for um, the Hubble constant can, can be looked at in, in two ways. The first one is if you're treating the velocity in meters per second and the distance in meters, 
you just end up uh, cancelling out the meters and you end up with an SI unit of seconds to the minus one. But you know, remember, when we're dealing with astrophysics, we're talking about they ha they've had to introduce different units. So cosmologists prefer to uh, express the speed in kilometers per second and the distance in megaparsecs. So that gives us a different unit of kilometers per second per megaparsec. Um, which has to be equivalent if you strip strip it back into its uh, base units um, to seconds to the minus one. Um, now this is the 2013 uh, um, uh, value for Hubble's constant, but it's changing. The more data points they collect, the more accurate the, the line gets. And and this is a this is this will be forever changing because if you think about it, the distance y you look at a a, a galaxy uh, one year. The year after, it has moved further away because it, it has a recessional uh, speed. And therefore, if it has moved further away, then its speed has increased. So that data point in itself has changed. So this is a, um, an ever evolving line of best fit. But the current value sits at about 67.8 uh, plus or minus, uh, an uncertainty that is a, a, a lot more acceptable. Um, or you can convert that into uh, s uh, seconds to the minus one. This is uh, his telescope. Uh, I hope you've answered the extension question, which was, you know what, putting it out in space means w the uh, analyzing the electromagnetic radiation, the electromagnetic waves that are coming uh, don't have to pass through our atmosphere. And therefore they get better, clearer, more robust information uh, to perform their analysis on. Okay, you might want to just pause the video and uh, have a go at this worked example. Remember, when we're dealing with this sort of thing, we have to uh, really check ourselves before we start it, knowing that we're gonna be dealing with a lot of big numbers, standard form with uh, a lot of um, uh, 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 complication there. Okay, so uh, Hubble's law was, was absolutely crucial um, uh, one of the key bits of evidence I suppose for the Big Bang Theory this idea that we started in a singularity and the universe then exploded from there and has been expanding the universe is expanding ever since and it's now widely accepted that that uh, that is the case um, and you know he used redshift as you can see we've seen this uh, graphic before um, and it states that the fabric of space and time is expanding in all directions. No matter, no matter where you look in the night sky, you're seeing galaxies that are redshifted. But it's not really the galaxies are moving. Uh, the way they tend to describe it is it's the un universe itself actually expanding and taking those galaxies with us. So it's not necessarily the galaxies that are moving they appear r relative to their position to be stationary, but the universe is expanding and taking that with them. <coughs> now, cosmology of principle, um, we, we've talked about this. It's, I, they say here it's a bold assumption, absolutely. It, it really just allows us to apply the laws of physics across the universe, and, and that's really, really important. Um, we've talked uh, more than once about homogeneous, but it's very, very important. You know, so if you look at a really big, big volume of the universe, then the density is uniform. Now, it, as you, as you like, I suppose, uh, uh, shrink your window, then of course you're going to have areas of the universe that d don't have galaxies in them, areas that have big galaxies in them. So it's not true unless you look at it from far enough away. And then this idea of isotropic, um, meaning there, there is no center. So there's no center to the universe and there's no edge, which again is, is a lot to get your head around. But I would definitely learn the cosmology principle. I would learn uh, what the words isotropic and homogeneous mean. Um, it's, I suppose it's important to make sure that when you're talking about an expanding universe, you're talking about the universe expanding rather than galaxies moving through space. Just be very clear um, in terms of those definitions. All right, there's something here uh, at the end for you to pause and read through. It's just a, a really nice summary of everything that we've just talked about. 
um, and then you've got the summary questions that you can also work through. All right, enjoy.